hey there everyone welcome back now let's move forward and explore this amazing library now before i go ahead and talk about the concept behind the working of this library let me touch a little bit on what is state management now we all know the state on the back end and that is the data is stored in the database now what about front end or the browser side client side how do we manage the state on the client side now there are various options variety of options to manage the application state the application state can also be of variety of types for example the data response coming from the server for example you have made any put request get request or post request to the server and the response which you are getting from the server is also a type of state the user information is stored on the client side the user for example uh, if a user is logged in the login details of that user is also a part of state user inputs the the inputs the form which you have created on the front end those are also managed using the state management the ui state for example you have uh, a ui on which certain tabs are displayed now the which tab is selected which radio button is selected which option is selected that's that is also a part of the state you can store that in a state so that other components can also uh, modify as per the as per the requirements uh, there is also a state in angular application which is router state or the location state now if you are not much aware about the routing what these routers are no worries i'll be explaining each and everything whenever when i'll be touching the code part now uh what is the application state hmm. basically application is application state basically holds uh the data in a central store now what these libraries do we have variety of libraries for example ngrx ngsx this akita now what are the main feature what are the main role of this library the main role of this library is to model our application state uh some of the people are a little bit confused in the state and the store now state is nothing but a blueprint of the data which is stored inside a store i i hope it makes sense to you a state is nothing but a representation of a data which is stored inside a store so all the components access that data in from inside the store so i hope now the state management is little bit clear to you that what is state management so let's go ahead and explore this library so it says reactive state management for javascript application now what is this reactive means here reactive means whenever a data is changed inside the store or whenever the state is changed our components our ui respond as per that change and re-render themselves to show the required changes so that basically what the reactive state management means so let's go ahead and explore the definition what it says is akita is a state management pattern built on the top of rxjs now rxjs is nothing but uh, the reactive extension of javascript which provides some awesome operators to modify the data uh, observable subjects these are all the parts of uh, rxjs which takes the idea of multiple data stores from flux and the immutable updates immutable updates from the redux now if you are not very much familiar about the flux and redux don't worry too much about that we will not be digging deep into those topics so basically what does this immutable update means immutable means this state which is stored inside a store we don't directly mutate that state we always clone that state make the required changes and return the new state we don't we never ever directly mutate the original state stored inside the store so that's what the immutability means so let's go ahead and explore this diagram so we have this component component is nothing but the ui element as i told you uh, it holds the ui information or the screen which you are seeing currently is the component uh, it fires an action through a service now here is a tip the store which contains the data you never ever modify that store directly from the components you always 
call a method inside a service and that method will mutate or will modify mutate is not a right word or will uh, modify the data inside the store so you fire an if you fire an action action is nothing but you simply call a method inside a service that service uh, if needed will call any backend api will fetch the data from the backend will store that data inside the store it will either store the new data or will update the current data now here what the query is query is nothing but you simply select or you basically select a part of the data in stored inside the store and you return it back to the component so that the component can display that data so the process through which the components brings the data from the store is basically through queries now a single query can interact with multiple queries and we will see that in action when uh, when we will be dealing with the code part so now the queries uh, provides a observable methods you can subscribe to the changes inside the store now the query whenever we query into the store it returns an observable and whenever you subscribe to that observable you get a stream of data for example you are subscribing uh, to a specific property let's say count count inside a store and whenever that count increases or decreases the component is notified automatically through query or through that observable which you have subscribed so that the component can re-tender itself and uh, update its ui so hope that it makes sense the diagram makes sense now now let's go ahead and create one brand new angular project so go to the terminal I hope that Angular is already installed on your systems. So to check that, type ng minus minus version. So mine is Angular version CLI version 9.0.1. So I'll recommend I recommend to use the latest version. So go ahead and create the brand new Angular project using ng new. Uh, let's uh, let's navigate to the desktop first and now create one brand new angular project using ngnew ngnew let's call it as akita youtube sorry it was misspelled yes so yes we need routing uh, we will be going for scss because it's little bit convenient to write SCSS than modern CSS. So it will go ahead and install all the dependencies and will create a brand new Angular project. Now there is one more command which I would like to show you through which you can generate an Angular project which is using the latest Angular version that is npx at angular slash cli at latest new and your project name. It will also create a angular project for you so let's quit this operation so we will see you in the next video uh, in the next video we will be moving ahead and modifying the little and we'll be creating a structure for our to do app so we will see you in the next video till then it will be finished downloading all the dependencies so see you in the next video thanks for watching